All right, so yesterday a buddy of mine came over. He's getting his first van. He wants to do some camping, and he was asking me what his best use of money would be to get a auxiliary power setup, solar, and what that would cost and what his different options were. So it got me thinking about what I would have done when I was starting out, if now, five years later, what I would do, whether I would do something like an all-in-one power station like this Jackery or a component system with separate battery, inverter, and solar charge controller. So we're discussing the potential advantages and disadvantages of the two systems. So I thought I'd share that with anyone else who is potentially trying to make the same decision. So the main benefit of something like this component system here, which is just a charge controller, inverter, and battery, is that you could change out individual parts over time as you decide that you want to upgrade. So you could change out this PWM controller for a higher capacity MPPT controller, for instance, or you could get an inverter that delivers more wattage. Or you could get, with the battery, it would be the same thing. You could upgrade this 35 amp hour battery to a 100 amp hour battery or to a lithium battery and so on. So the obvious advantage of a power station like this Jackery here is that all of these components are built in. So this is a one-stop shop for all your power needs, essentially. However, if you want to upgrade, you have to replace the entire unit. So I think the main issue for most people when they're starting out is going to be cost. Here we have a $30 charge controller, $50 inverter, $75 battery. So if you add all that up, you can round it up to about $150 once you add in a couple cables that you'll need. And that of course is a bit lower than even the low price on this Jacker unit, which is about $250 off the shelf at Harbor Freight at the moment. However, if you begin to compare the components of the two, then that price difference might start to make more sense. Obviously, most people are willing to pay for convenience, in this case, all in one, not needing to connect any wires or know anything about it other than how to turn it on. However, the components I have here and describe and the prices I described are for lower quality components than what you'll probably find in this Jackery. The first being this is a PWM controller. The Jackery has a built-in MPPT charge controller, which is basically a more efficient manner of taking solar power and converting it to battery power. Then you have the inverter. This is rated at 400 watts, but it is a modified sine wave inverter. Modified side wave is not nearly as good for sensitive electronics like laptops, and I can attest to that myself. This is what I was using for a long time with the laptop, and I had very mixed results depending on the laptop I was using and if it even wanted to charge or if it would send this into protect mode, even though it seemed to have over double the wattage of what I need for the computer power supply. This Jackery, on the other hand, has a pure sine wave inverter which I have tested it with my laptop, same laptop that I've used with this, and this handled the laptop no problem. Then we move on to the battery. So this battery is a AGM battery, sealed lead acid AGM, which stands for absorbed glass mat, and it's a deep cycle, and it's a very common style of deep cycle battery, and this price is very, very competitive in the market for that many amp hours. So with all sealed lead acid batteries and the various types of AGM to protect their life expectancy. You need to be careful to not deplete the battery below 50% of its rating. So as you're using power, you're only wanting to use 17 and a half amp hours out of the 35 amp hours. If you times that by 12 volts, uh, three, 35 amp hours is 420 watt hours. And this Jackery is rated for 293 watt hours. Well, at its face, that seems like this battery would provide more watt hours. However, if you're only using half of that to protect the longevity of the battery's lifespan, then you're looking at only 210 watt hours versus 293 watt hours. So that's an obvious win for the Jackery. Not only that, this battery is 24 pounds. This Jackery weighs in at just about six and a half pounds. So 24 pounds versus six and a half pounds, and you look at them, they're essentially a very similar physical footprint. And that does not, of course, include the other components you will need. So either way, it's just as easy to get solar from, from this panel into this or from this. Just understand you're one cable away from hooking up solar to either one. So that is not an issue. All that to say, what will work best for you and what will work best for me or for my buddy are not necessarily going to be the same at all. So you need to understand what your power consumption needs are, what your end goal is. If you just need to recharge your phone now and then or run a laptop while you're out on the road, then something like this Jacker unit might be perfect. If you have other needs and you want to be able to add different components or change components over time and upgrade, then maybe this is a, a good route for you. If weight is a big concern for you, then the Jackery is going to be a no-brainer. If you want things to stay mounted and in the same place all the time, 
the component is the no-brainer, whereas the Jackery is perfect if you plan to take it in different vehicles. That would not best be served by having everything mounted. So at the start, the Jackery comes out much more expensive. You factor in the quality of the components and the weight and the time and energy and understanding needed to connect these different components. Then the Jackery seems to come out on top. That's just me. Also, in my van, I have a component system set up and I don't think it would be best suited with an all-in-one system, but I also have much heavier duty components now mounted in my van. And to match that with an all-in-one station would cost a lot of money. Not only have I upgraded my setup over time, but my needs have also evolved as well. If cheap power stations had been available when I first got my van, I probably would have gone that way just because I didn't know anything about the separate components needed for a solar system. So weigh all those factors, the different trade-offs, and I hope that this video has helped you make the best decision for your situation. All right, have a good one.